Hello, and welcome to this edition of Here's What's Cooking at Key Corral, Bachtoberfest. Tile, Eitz, Bach, and beer. What a perfect combination. Key Corral Chamber Singers and Church of the Redeemer present our unique take on Oktoberfest with a three-day festival celebrating the music and the genius of Johann Sebastian Bach. Enjoy four distinct concerts featuring the stunning virtuosity of soprano Mary Wilson, trumpeter Aaron Rahm, professional soloist, chamber orchestra, and our amazing chamber singers. Our festival concludes with a beer garden experience complete with German food, beers from Calusa Brewing, that is good beer, and music from Bill Milner's Oompa Band. Saturday's concert will feature triple threat Sam Nelson, a phenomenal organist, conductor, and choir master. He will be featured in an afternoon organ recital, complete with a box lunch, and in our period instruments chamber music concert, not to be missed. This is a rare opportunity to hear instruments from the time of Bach himself. In this video, we will explore some of the music featured in our opening and closing concerts. Johann Sebastian Bach was one of the most inventive composers of the Baroque, and one of the most celebrated Western composers of all time. He was taught the violin, harpsichord, and organ at a very early age. By the age of 10, Johann was an orphan and went to live with his older brother, Johann Christoph Bach. Johann Christoph was a church organist who had studied with Pachelbel and gave younger brother J.S. Bach his first keyboard lessons. Bach wasn't just a prolific composer, he was prolific. He married his cousin Maria Barbara Bach in 1707 and had seven children. After she suddenly passed away in 1720, Bach married Anna Magdalena. Together they had 13 children. Sadly, of his 20 children, only half survived, but four out of the 10 went on to become notable composers. Bach's music now is often considered the pinnacle of the Baroque period. In his time, he was regarded as a respected and fine organist throughout all of Europe but he wasn't widely recognized as a composer until a revival of his music in the first half of the 19th century. One of those works lost until that mid 19th century revival was what has become known as the Brandenburg Concertos. These six pieces were completed in 1721 and dedicated to Margrave Christian Ludwig von Brandenburg. So why did Bach compile these concerti? Well, because like so many musicians, he was looking for a job. But what started out as a job application for a dream job eventually ended up in the lost and found box. While the Margrave was seemingly uninterested, luckily for us, he did at least keep the music sufficiently preserved so that when the concertos were eventually rediscovered, the manuscript was in great shape. The Margrave died in 1734, at which time the manuscript was sold for the equivalent of $24. Eventually, it ended up being found by the custodian of the Prussian Royal Library in 1849. The concertos were then published for the first time in 1850. They were eventually given the name Brandenburg Concertos in 1873, and the rest is history. To open our Bach Festival, I have chosen one of my favorite Brandenburg Concertos, Brandenburg No. 2. In this case, a quartet of soloists, trumpet, flute, oboe, and violin are accompanied by a string orchestra. And while the notes on paper would suggest that all four soloists are equal, it is always the trumpet which attracts the most attention. Our trumpet soloist will be Aaron Rahm. Aaron, along with soprano soloist Phenom and dear friend Mary Wilson, will be featured in Bach's Cantata 51 for soprano and trumpet, titled Jaxit Gott in Allen London, Shout for Joy to God in All Lands. In this cantata, the trumpet comes straight to the point, creating the ecstatic move which revolves around jubilation and gratitude. The interplay between trumpet and soprano is mesmerizing. I first learned of this piece in high school when Wynton Marcellus and the great Kathleen Battle recorded their Drop the Mic album, Baroque Duet. Thank you. 
of the cornerstones of Boktoberfest will be Bach's Mighty Magnificat. It was originally composed for a performance December 25th in 1723. So 2023 marks its 300th anniversary. For this masterpiece, Bach employs one of his largest orchestras, two flutes, two oboes, bassoon, strings, continuo, three trumpets, and timpani. And instead of the typical four-part choir, he employs five parts, soprano one, soprano two, alto, tenor, and bass. All of this leads to an incredible density of textures and sounds, which he uses at the beginning and end, as well as two choruses placed within the work. The opening of Magnificat is full of joy and jubilation. The orchestra plays for 30 measures before we hear the first entrance of the choir. work is less than 30 minutes long. It is remarkable how many surprising moments Bach has in store for us. The third movement for soprano solo and oboe de mori is one of the most sublime of the entire work. But at the very end, Bach employs a remarkable moment of theater. As the soprano sings of her lowliness and humility, behold, from henceforth, I will be called blessed. Her phrase traditionally ends with the text, by all generations. But instead of the soloist finishing the phrase, all generations, Bach moves from the stillness of this intimate duet to an abrupt thunderclap with a tidal force from the full chorus and orchestra on the words, omnis generationis, all generations. Bach uses a motif of five repeated eighth notes on the same pitch 41 times in barely one minute of music. He moves quickly from key to key stacking this idea one on top of the other, building an incredible energy. Well, you may not read music, you easily will see in this example just how he uses this idea. Oftentimes the next entry happens before the previous one has even finished, creating yet even more drama and intensity. <laughs> Now Bach had a talent for writing things that are quite impossible to sing. And the seventh movement, Fetchi Potentium, is an example of just that. 
Bach gives us a theme based on the words, he has shown strength with his arm, that is quick, florid, and nearly impossible to sing. Petit potentium in brachio suo potentium petit potentium. While the tenors get to sing this theme first, every section of the choir gets a shot at this tricky passage. Even the trumpet gets to play this theme, but in a register so high it's closer to heaven than earth. Bach employs much symbolism and word painting throughout the work. In fact, too many to highlight them all in this video. But here are just a few you don't want to miss. Movement 9, A Surientes in Plevi Bonis, is a playful aria for alto, two flutes, and continuo. The soloist's last phrase is, and the rich sent empty away. In a magisterial display of symbolism, Bach deprives the two flutes of the final cadence, in essence, sending them away empty and leaving the final delayed cadence to the bass. is a setting of the doxology. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et in secula seculorum. Amen. Which translates to glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and forever and ever. Amen. The opening of the final movement is slow and grand with ascending triplets rising to heaven on the word Gloria or glory. It happens three times, once for the Father, once for the Son, and finally for the Holy Spirit. While the first two rise toward heaven, the Father and the Son, the third, the Holy Spirit, actually descends, symbolizing the Holy Spirit coming down to dwell on earth. While a mere mortal would easily call this a good day's work, Bach, on the other hand, has one more symbolic stroke of genius to add. At the words, as it was in the beginning, Bach takes those words literally and takes us back to the music of the first movement, and in under two minutes, gives us one of the greatest finales of the entire Baroque period.
just a taste of what's in store for you. If you want to explore more, check out our Here's What's Cooking Boktoberfest Part 2 on Key Corral's YouTube channel. Sublime music, exquisite artistry, and a little fun too. That's what you can expect at Boktoberfest, October 13, 14, and 15. Single tickets on sale now and save 15% when you buy the three-day pass. See you at the concerts. Auf Wiedersehen!